But the film is a sad thing for For she's lived it ten times or more She could spit in the eyes of fools And they ask her to focus on sailors Fighting in the dance hall This is the third article of seven articles I'm recording about why Tesla will succeed and has competitive edge in the time of the crisis. Number three, which is this version, is about supply and demand. Supply and demand are extremely critical in my opinion and we already see this in Q Q1 numbers and we can look out for Q2 numbers as well and obviously I'm looking at the year 2020. I'm also going to look at what happened in Asia, Europe and the US and in particular about the production facilities as well as the con construction that is ongoing in China and in Germany. Supply and demand are different sides of the same coin and you just look at this from different perspectives. If you want to read about the mystery of demand, you probably want to read my article that I wrote, I think back in 2018 about the mystery of demand that explains a little bit more about that. Most people have been very much surprised about Tesla's positive Q1 numbers and I don't want to sound arrogant but to be honest I have not been that much surprised or not surprised at all because it, it was visible right before and there are reasons for that. One reason is the supply chain of Tesla, another reason is the delivery and delivery process as well as the online ordering process and number three is demand. So let's look at number one. At the beginning of the quarter Tesla is producing and putting on ships all vehicles that should be delivered in Europe at the end of the quarter and since the crisis did hit in the middle to the end of the quarter of the Q1 quarter, it was not surprised to me that, you know, all the volume that has been produced for Europe was already on the way. And it was more a question how to deliver those. Once I learned that Tesla has a touchless delivery process and is the only one in the auto industry that's able to do that, it was very much clear to me that the impact on the crisis is not going to be that bad for them. On top of it, Tesla is known for online ordering, so there is no interruption in the ordering process because they just can do it like they've been doing it before, while all other automakers are interrupted because the dealerships are closed. So there is no ordering process in place. And if you don't have an ordering process, you just don't have demand, even if you kind of would have demand. Which leads me to number three. Tesla has still a huge pile of demand out there that's untouched. We know this from ordering that is happening, for instance, with the Cybertruck, which is of course not produced yet. But we know this also from the Model Y, which is just starting. This is a very highly anticipated crossover, which has a lot of positives in the vehicle and a lot of people are really looking forward to get it. So you can imagine there's gonna be a high demand for that, untapped demand. And we all see it from, you know, from the recent price changes Tesla did in China and people are waiting still in the middle of the crisis for the vehicle set. There's absolutely zero issue around demand for Tesla. So because of that three reasons, it was clear to me that Q number, Q1 numbers should look pretty good and they actually did. So if you look from Europe to Asia, in Asia the situation was actually much better. They definitely did have a downtime in terms of production, but the Shanghai factory is ramping. So 
Um, if you would have asked me what a perfect time is for bringing the factory down, I actually would have chosen the early time of Q1. And, you know, the interruption have been short. So deliveries could pick up right after with, um, you know, a lot of safety and security measures in place to make sure nobody's infected. And it was very impressive to see that nobody in the Shanghai factory had any health issues concerning the coronavirus. So Asia did and China did pretty well. And we know from a lot of videos that, you know, people have been lining up and waiting for their vehicles. So I haven't had any any concerns about Asia. My concern has been more about the US. But if you look at the facts, the factory stopped producing at March the 23rd, so which was already pretty much at the end of the quarter. Having said that, we know that, you know, that was kind of one or two week um, lost production, if you will, where they could not deliver. So for that reason, the impact on the US ought to be small too. So this has been my prediction of Q1. So I did see that, you know, inventory will probably pile up, which actually is the case. And they couldn't deliver all what they've been producing, which is also the case. But at the end of the day, the market sentiment has been way too negative. And everybody was surprised when the Q numbers came out. But for me, it wasn't much of a surprise. Obviously, Q1 looks better than expected, so granted. But what is about Q2? Q2 is a big question mark for most people, and a lot of people are concerned, and I've been concerned as well, before I looked a little bit deeper into it. So number one is Freeman as well as Sparks are down, so there is no production ongoing since the 23rd, which is really bad because um, at the beginning of the quarter, as said before, uh, usually shipments are going to Europe, so there is no pipeline going to Europe at the moment. So this is draining, which is which is bad. Still, there will be inventory in Europe that can be delivered to a certain extent, but but still, that's not good. So um, what we have here is an automaker that is using the the downtime right now in order to you know improve productivity, do maintenance and um, retooling work, which is and most don't know that. To a two-week period on, a, on an annualized basis is quite normal for an automaker in terms of maintenance and retooling. So looking on the entire year, this doesn't really mean that much for the output. Um, for Europe, again, this is going to be low in terms of deliveries. There is no mistake here. And this is probably the biggest concern because... In Asia, we have Shanghai producing on all cylinders. So this is really going much, much better than expected. And latest numbers are giving us really a lot of hope that they can mitigate the output shortage from the US in Asia, in Shanghai to a certain extent, which is extremely positive. Also, it needs to be said that from internal letters from Tesla, we know that the plan is to restart production on May the 4th which would mean that all of May production is probably going to Europe to be able to, to cover the demand that is in there. And the June production is going to be delivered in the US, while in parallel, and we know that, Shanghai is producing all the time and delivering. So if we add all of that together with ramping Shanghai and about a few weeks downtime in the US in a ramping situation, I don't expect um, really very bad or negative numbers. A portion of that what is lost in the US is gonna be catched up from Shanghai with again more positive numbers than most expected. But under the line there is even a chance to be better in Q2 than in Q1. Yes you heard this right. So I'm tending more and more which every day that is passing by to believe there is a there is a fair chance to have sequential growth from Q1 to Q2, which would be just amazing. I mean, again, compare this to other automakers where they are standing. We talk here about 30 to 40 percent down in terms of output and sales. And Tesla looks like a Q1 record quarter 
and another growth if not flat quarter for Q2, which is just amazing. So what do we have? Let's summarize, let's conclude. We have a Q1 which is record breaking. We have a Q2 which really doesn't look that bad. I mean, if they really can start production in Fremont and Sparks and Buffalo again uh, at May the 4th, I'm pretty positive about the outcome of Q2. At least it wouldn't be as bad as the sentiment in the market is. The second half of this year is going to be awesome because we're going to see a lot of incentive programs in order to support sales of vehicles and Tesla will definitely benefit from that. Besides, you know, Shanghai is going to produce like crazy and we're going to see productivity increases in Fremont. So this is all awesome. And then we have Gigafactory Berlin Brandenburg, which is in construction. And we see from these pictures that they are doing pretty well. I mean, they are on schedule. I'm not concerned about the outcome of this. And last not least, very important, we have the production line for Model Y in Shanghai, in China, building up pretty rapidly. So 2021 is going to be awesome. And this is supporting my thesis and what I'm trying to say here, which is Tesla is much better positioned in terms of competitive edge than anybody else in the market. If you want to hear more about that, feel free to read and to listen to my next video, which is going to be about vertical integration. Is there life?